producers thinks that we're a car dealer and we're coming in now with the 22s we know the real time don't worry we're not all nuts yet but uh we're gonna do something a little nutsy today i promised you early on um that we would do interesting things throughout we wouldn't just read plays all the time although that's our main focus um to present new new works and to present new artists and uh just to keep working on uh on the work but today we're going to do something a little different by experimenting we like to do a little bit of experimental theater we like to play with the words so we're taking an old play of mine not it's actually been produced and it's been um done with a requiem mass by george by uh, robert eugle and um it's been published twice and both times, it's still not where I want it to be. So we're going to take it apart today and uh, we're going to deconstruct it. We're, we're taking a huge portion of it that has a monologue that has pieces and we're taking out the pieces in between the monologue pieces. So without further ado, I give you Carrie Wesolowski, who's going to introduce to you our cast today for Candle Dancing, an experiment. Thank you. Hi, Connie. Thanks, Connie. So let me introduce Byron C. Saunders today, who will be reading Father Peter Andrews. Byron C. Saunders is an arts management consultant, actor, director, producer, dramaturg, historian, radio talk show personality, and civil rights advocate. Byron's highlights and many credits currently include working as an independent arts management consultant, helping artists and arts organizations with grants administration, fund development, marketing, public relations, event planning, and capacity growth and development. And I will be reading the part of the narrator. And now a little bit about candle dancing. Father Peter Andrews, Benedict, Benedictine monk, in his mid forties, who acts as music minister of the East Abbey. He has a fascination for ancient art history and literature with emphasis on the origin of language. Father Peter is quite charismatic, strongly attractive, yet not typically masculine. His resolute character would be inclined to be found in a determined woman. Act one, scene one. The tribunal, time, the recent past, place, Cardinal Roland's office. My name um, is Father Peter Andrews. I am a Benedictine monk, and I presently assume the position of music minister, choral director, and pastor of East Abbey. I believe. I have uh, just been asked to defend my theological dissertation on the concept of homo nobis. See, your eminence, your eminence, I respectfully disagree with your findings. You see, my research for theorists uh, on linguistics based on composition, pedagogy, uh, lies on a universal understanding of the roots of language and its inference of gender and hopefully the elimination of such continued subterfuge. You see, my focus 
on the um, purification of language gives rise to an emphasis to certain motifs, which seem quite incongruous with post-structuralist uh, theory. For instance, all articulations are acts of communion between socially positioned individuals, either in same sex or opposing gender dialogues. You see, certain pronouns and inferences are used to create and refract the biological difference in the hierarchy of social stratum. You see, in my research, I wish to deny that, uh, that and regard language as a closed system without a gender, ultimately um, in the philosophical tradition of idealism. Yes, yes. See, in an attempt to develop a perceptible, refined, and realist account of language, I believe the church has the power to institute such a challenge and perhaps even conclude in the elimination of gender altogether, or even more, create the truth synthesis of Christ. Yes, 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 of course, of course. See, as director of the East Abbey Choir, the sudden controversy over all-inclusive language opened my eyes to a gender conflict, exposing the male dominance within the church. See, I realized that the whole power struggle was resting on mere words, and thus the actual truth didn't matter. He who has the power to change the words can change the world. I decided it was time to create a new kind of liturgical dialectic that could break through the bondage of words and homo novus, homo novus began coming up in my, in my research. Well, see, it, 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 it began when I started to notice similarities and, and parallels between gender and language. Certain veils of illusion began just lifting. And I mean, I, I would be in church singing and watching my music performing. And then a friend would come by and smile, break the fourth wall. And, and I would realize that this was not a performance. It was real life that I, I was performing the action of the church uh, for real. And, and it was a strange feeling, but somehow I knew, I knew I, I was onto something every time I was conscious of the text and its sexual context. I would recognize someone in the con congregation of the opposite sex, thus denigrating the language uh, of divinity within the individual's particular soul. And it was these parallels then led to my research. You see, I have always had this theory about God. God is our creator and thus creative. See, he made a giraffe, a rhino, a frog. And if we are to live in his image, we need to be creative. That is all. Yes, yes, and you must see, simply, we have uh, transposed the creative nature of the soul for exposition of the sexual side of the physical body, all of which was achieved through a, a history of male-dominated language. You see, now with Homo Novus, we are actually understanding the importance of sex and how it plays into religion. Yes, yes. But see, now, I can test and prove these theories. With my new theology, the church, our church, will at last be able to remedy a century of pain, torture, and ugly frustrations created by the bondage of sexual perversions and exploitation. According to Thomas Hanna, the homo novus is no battleground, no split personality, but an, an image of, of man unified. 
See, and, and according to psychologist Thomas Hanna, the, the homo novus is, is no battleground. No, 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 no. The, the homo novus is no battleground. See, no split personality, but an image of man unified. I'm sorry, Father Bonatelli. I let anger rule my tongue. As I was saying, according to Thomas Hammond, the homo novus is no battleground, no split personality but an image of man, unified, unique, fully synergic with life, seeking fulfillment of himself and others in highly effective ways. Now, those of us who have worked with these ideas have the feeling of being immersed in a worldwide shift in human thought sweeping forward like a great tide, deep, compelling and invincible. The full import of its ascendancy can only be dimly perceived from our present vantage point, but vaguely discerned its promise and potential for all aspects of human existence staggers, staggers the imagination. I mean, what is needed now is the widest possible recruitment of persons from every walk of life for the task of exploring and advancing the full implications of this new image of man as quickly and as thoroughly as is possible. You see, the times we live in, your eminences are desperately in need of this hope and revitalization. This text, this text, this text, these words has the power to transform our society back into paradise. Homo novus is a concept that can explain the surge that you feel when you hear Vivaldi, Beethoven, Mozart. Yes, finally, again, we can feel and we can sense love. Yes. We become real and authentic, are able to enter into I, thou relationships with others rather than viewing them as objects to be manipulated and controlled. This love is non-possessive and allows us to love non-judgmentally as Jesus taught us. And with this new insight, the human sees the world differently and begins to change its reality in terms of, of these new, new perceptions. <laughs> no, no, no. You won't <laughs> find homo novus in the dictionary, but he is real, very real. See, I met him, I met him on my doorstep at the Abbey, a veritable fledgling, a street urchin. I brought him in and transformed him into the choir boy of choir boys, whose song manifested a greater truth than, than all. And now I find myself facing seclusion because of this truth. Our choir boy is the homo novus. This is evolution. The spirit of man is, is not male. And what is male, huh? It's left, it's left out to divide the spirit of God on earth, all right? Now look, male and female are constructs. Gender is an imaginary boundary, just like race and, and nation and class. But who proves the pages of words that are allowed the rite of passage into our minds 
the editor of the dictionary? Come on, I don't think so. It's not that simple. Ultimately, someone is controlling the word power that has transformed our thoughts into this wretched reality that we call civilized society. Is that the church? Are we part of the problem here? Now think about it. Who exactly started regulating the words used in prayers and, and hymns in our churches? Mother God? New age? This, this is not even a, a new concept. Let's study the women of the medieval church, Julian of Norwich, Marjorie Kemp, and Hildegard inclusive, language, multicultural, politically correct, paradigm shift. No, no. Somebody is controlling the language we use and that's somebody who knows exactly what we are doing, what they are doing. It is Satan again. That's snake. Someone is trying to play God. The tree of the fruit of knowledge is good of good and evil. Now, whatever happened to the one law, love one another. As Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and we're merely players. And we may try to rewrite the script, but ultimately, God is the author of this story. We can try, yet we can only fool ourselves with this grand illusion that we've created. Blackout. Act one, scene two. Time, a few weeks later. Place, Father Peter's cell. One must never underestimate the power of spoken or written word. Entire churches are built upon the word. whole civilization could crumble from its meanings. In the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. That just happens to be my favorite biblical passage. Ah, yes. John's gospel. Ooh. Father, 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 forgive them, forgive them. You cannot do this, Roland. Please, Roland, please. This is not a vendetta between us anymore. This boy is from God. The spirit is still here. It's real. Now, you must continue the investigations. Now, let, let me continue my studies. And he is the proof that I've been searching for. He can make God's love real for so many people who would otherwise just turn away. Why? It may even lead Oh, God, to world peace. Father, tell them. Make him see. God, please, God, please. No! <laughs> Think of your soul. You shall be burn a thousand times. Malcolm, 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 you've heard the voice singing. It's, it's sacred text from the Middle Ages. Now I have the report from the University of Colorado. This is not our secret to squash. You've heard him. They have offered us money to restore the chapel because of him. They resurrected another steering committee. 
at the linguistics department? <laughs> if we refuse the money, it might give them the idea that Will's death wasn't an accident. The point is, even the secular world believes in miracles sometimes. What are you afraid of, Cardinal? Hmm? Have I tied your hands now? Huh? huh. Lies. Lies. I shall leave the church and then start my own, own investigation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, uh, I'm sorry, Roland. You had me compromised once before, and I, and I gave in. <laughs> I forgive you. That was a long time ago, but this, this, Roland, this is too important. This boy is from God. He is God's will. And thy will must be done. No, no, no. There's blood <laughs> and water. There's the blood and the water. That's proof of a miracle, isn't it? Mary Agnes, Mary Agnes, did, did you did you read her report? Okay, all right. What what what? You got to her too, huh? Oh, why you are a snake. Now you're the one courting demons, Roland. You dine with the devil every time you speak ill of will. The miracle in the lab was real. The blood carbon was dated at the lab. We had it tested and it's dated back to the time of Christ. No. I have a friend at the genetics lab at the university, and it is still. Please, please wait, please. This is God's divine will, not mine. Please, God's will, God's will, will. The Lockout, Act One, Scene Three, The Breakdown. Later that night, Peter's cell. In Peter's cell, Mother Mary Agnes exits and locks the door after herself as Peter starts back at his desk, rifling through a large dictionary. Nord, 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 Norm. Yes, that's North, North, North. Norwegian, uh, Nostrum, a uh, 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 notation, notation, notice, mm, 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 Nostrum, Nostrum. Ah, and now a quick remedy, a patent, a uh, medicine of doubtful efficacy, a, a, a pet scheme, a pet scheme, yes, pushed by some visionary from the, from the Latin meaning, ah, all right. So, noun, nourish, Nova, Novena, Novice, now, no weird nuance, nucleus, Novus, N O V U S. Ah, uh, yes, yes, sir. Oh, yes. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, right here, right here. That's the spelling for sure. Homo Novus, H O M O N O V U S H O. Homo, right? Novus, N O V U S. Uh, I'm really not surprised. Are you? Webster, Webster only puts in his dictionary what Webster wants to understand, right? Well, well, who is Webster? Who is Webster to tell us what we should know? For that matter, who is Webster today anyway? Who selects these words that shape our minds, that mold our society, that predestines our destiny? In the beginning, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh and developed amongst us. Please, please, I am sorry. That, that is not like me at all. I am 
But th that just happens to be my favorite biblical passage. And if it were up to me, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't read anything but John's gospel, though, though that would have to be blasphemy. <laughs> Divine blasphemy. Be ye transformed. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for yet another verse of great confidence. Meaningless, oh my word, my word. <laughs> Meaning, meaning less than what? <laughs> Homo novus, <laughs> the main man, the new man. Yes, you see, no man can stop God's divine will. That's right, that's right. And the Homo novus is no background, no split personality, but an image of man unified, unique, fully synergic with life seeking fulfillment for himself and others in the highly effective ways. Those of us who have worked with these ideas have the feeling of being immersed in a worldwide shift in human thought, sweeping forward like a great tide deep, compelling, and invincible. Now, the image of Homo novus is rapidly coming into being. See, bringing with it the need for great changes in our ways of life and new hope for persons everywhere. The full import of its ascendancy can only be dimly perceived from our present vantage point, but even vaguely discerned its promise and potential for all aspects of human existence staggers the imagination. Oh, what is needed now, what is needed now is the wildest possible recruitment of persons from every walk of life for the task of exploring and advancing the full implications of this new image of man as quickly and as thoroughly as possible. Oh my God, the times we live in are desperately in need of the hope and rejuvenation of truly noble conception of man and his possibilities abilities can bring us Homo Novus, an image that helps modern man rediscover his humanity. The individual becomes increasingly more open to experience more aware of his feelings in deeper levels. Yes, yes, that would explain the surge. See, when we hear Vivaldi or Mozart, we can feel, I can sense Homo Novus, can sense the, and identify with the other person's private world of inner meanings and feelings. Yes, he becomes freely, spontaneously himself. He is genuinely there. He's, he's not playing a game or hiding behind a facade. He is real and authentic, entering into I, thou relationships with others, other rather than viewing them as objects to be manipulated used and exploited. Yes, he accepts and respects and cares about the other in a non-possessive way. He doesn't have a need to judge. Damn right, sister. This is divine knowledge and nothing mortal can stop it. Why on earth is, is the word homo novus left out of the bloody dictionary? I tell you why. Somebody is controlling things, and that somebody knows exactly what they are doing. That snake. Somebody is trying to play God, and not by being naturally creative. No, this this is manipulation, plain and simple. The tree of fruit of the knowledge of blood, good and evil. Who is that that receives exactly what words we are allowed to say to each other? Who establishes morality? Who writes the laws we live by today? I mean, whatever happened to the laws of God? He still is chief author of this story. No, you won't find Homo Novus in the dictionary, but he is real, very real. I met him on the streets, a veritable fledgling, a, a, a street urchin, and I brought him into East Abbey transformed him into the choir boy of choir birds whose songs sang greater truth than they all. And now I find myself going back into the seclusion. My life's work stop, stifle. This is, cannot happen. It will not. Holy, holy, holy angel holds the door of thee. Fail thy gaze in deepest law of the majesty. All the saints in glory lay their crowns before thee, God in three.
person's blessed trinity. And in its final ruling, God damn it, this is not about me rolling and you know it. Well, 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 sing to me again, boy. Well, sing, sing again, sing again. I, I, I can't make them listen. I can make them listen. I really can. I know I can. Blackout. Thanks for listening today. Join us next week on Airplay.